Hi guys, my name is Angela and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today has been wonderful. I was planning on doing a very different video than what I have done today. I was going to do some baking and we were going to have a bookish chat, but it turns out that uh, today was a day that I had to go to the garden center and I had to share the experience with you. So I hope you enjoyed that snip, snippet into what my morning was like. It was just beautiful. I woke up really early this morning and I had a couple of soft boiled eggs with toast soldiers, which was very nostalgic. Uh, so I enjoyed that. And then I went to the garden center, did the grocery shopping. And so now I have the afternoon at home just to do whatever I want to do. And this afternoon, I'm going to actually plant those plants uh, that I got for the vegetable garden. I'm going to do that this afternoon in our veggie patch. And they're just things that I didn't get a chance to seed raise, like kale, spinach, uh, some lettuces, just to give me a bit of a head start. So in this video, my plan is to share with you uh, a little bit of what I've been reading, what I have recently. I've got actually got a box here that was just delivered today with a couple of books. Uh, so I'm going to share that with you. And this is most definitely a bookish chat for nature lovers. So I think there's a number of you out there. So I hope you enjoy this. The weather has just been exquisite here in Perth right now. If I can share a summary of our forecast, I will. It's just been sublime. And today has been the springiest autumn day I can ever remember. It just, it feels like spring. I don't know what it is. The, the flowers that I've seen in the shops, the, the things I saw in the garden center, it just felt very spring-like. Um, even some mascari bulbs that I planted last weekend have already started to hop through the soil. So it's very confusing. But I'm okay with it. It's lovely to experience. So I have my cup of tea. This is something that I've been enjoying so far this season, and especially when it's in my little Emma Bridgewater mug. These are little mice who are actually harvesting strawberries, again with the springness, but this is the only Emma Bridgewater I have, so I'm, I'm happy to use it for every time. Um, so I've got my tea, and I'm gonna share with you a couple of books that I've been reading lately. Um, these are definitely with a nature garden aspect to it. The fir first one is Evergreen by Lydia Millen. You may be familiar with the name. Lydia is quite a veteran on YouTube. I don't know when I came across her first. She definitely was not a YouTuber I would have followed naturally, but over the last few years since the pandemic, her style has evolved where she's become much more about uh, in embracing nature, embracing the seasons, her and her husband live in this beautiful home in Buckinghamshire and it's just the the environment is such a large part of where they live and she has the most insane greenhouse and vegetable garden so I'm there for that that's the content I watch Lydia Millen for she brought this out around Christmas last year which is um, evergreen and it takes you through the seasons it starts off in midwinter which is January February and currently I'm in spring and it's the, the, the idea of it is about living an evergreen life. So this is what evergreen, this is the introduction. Evergreen definition, bearing foliage throughout the year, continually shredding and replacing leaves. And Lydia's taken that definition and applied it to her life. So she is continually flourishing, but she is also shedding things that are no longer needed, whether it be habits or people or whatever it is. And I truly believe in that, that we need to continually be pruning branches and cutting vines to allow new growth to come. If you're a gardener, you know that you have to go through pruning of plants to get the big flush of leaves or flowers or produce. It's not, it's, it's good for the plant to be pruned. And it's a, it's a really great analogy in life. And it's quite a biblical analogy that you need to uh, have these things pruned away from your life to allow new things to come. And so I, I really appreciate that message in here and it's really quite honest and forthright and the writing is lovely and so I'm really enjoying that right now. I can't wait to get to the autumn and winter aspect of it because that is where the season I'm currently going into. So the other book that I've had on the go which has become a little bit of a bible to me is Gardening Through the Year in Australia and this is a book that just takes you month by month by month through uh, you know, of what you should be doing, what sh what will be happening in the garden over that month. And it's just a really great reference tool. I've had it as a book I've wanted to get for a while and I saw it on sale, so I finally grabbed it. Because these books are 
I, I feel when it comes to these type of books, they are something that you do have to refresh every now and then. The books that I have for gardening from 10 years ago have very different techniques to what we recommend now for people. For example, um, the books that I probably have still recommend tilling soil and turning it over, whereas when I vegetable garden now, I have a no dig approach and that's something that's fostered in here as well. So it's definitely something I think that you need to keep refreshing as the years go on. So I'm enjoying it. So it tells you a uh, little information about uh, some bullet points of what you should be doing and you know in the garden and what you should be preparing for in the next for the next couple of months uh, and then it goes into further detail it has this cool feature where it shows you the plants that are star plants for that month which is a really great tool when you're planning your garden because for, for lack of a better word we have a very evergreen garden and so that means that we just have a lot of greenery all year round even in winter and while I like that and it's great in summer, they hold, hold up to the heat. When it comes to winter, it just really means that there isn't a lot of interest. So it is nice to be able to see these examples and think, well, maybe there's something there that I could put in to get a bit of winter interest or spring interest or whatever it might be. So that was a really cool feature that I did like. And as I was reading through the things for April, it reminded me to order a new plant. So we have at the front of our house, we have this incredible pomegranate, which pomegranates are normally a shrub and we've trained ours into a tree. It's a really beautiful tree. The reason I wanted it wasn't so much for the pomegranates. It was because it has year round interest. In autumn, it has autumn foliage. In winter, it has a really interesting bark. Spring, it has the new growth and, and beautiful red flowers. And then of course, in summer, you have the fruit. But I don't eat pomegranates all that much. They, they are just really bothersome. I, I don't want to have to spend that much time uh, for a little bit of a garnish. So I want to replace it with a quince tree, which is a fairly non-invasive fruit tree. It is a self-pollinator. Generally, they need pollen from other trees to be able to create that fruit. And a quince doesn't need any further trees around it. For me now, I need to start thinking about, well, it's, I need to pull out a tree for a start, so I need to get that happening. And then I need to prepare the bed for the new tree. And so it was a really great reminder to do that. And I'm really excited for this to be a constant reference in the months ahead, as I really try and get a hold on my gardening. And the other book that I am looking forward to diving into a little bit more this afternoon is In the Garden, Essays on Nature and Growing. I shared this with you back when I did a book haul, uh, the big insane book haul that I did at the start of this year. And it's a selection of maybe 12 to 15 essays all about growing, nature, gardening. Um, it is British based, which I don't, I don't mind. I really enjoy that. Uh, aspect of it. So I'm looking forward to diving into this this afternoon. After I've done a little bit more gardening, I think I'll be in the mood for it. There is actually uh, three books that I'm aware of in this series, in this publication. There is At the Pond, which is uh, about the Hampstead Heath Ladies Swimming Pond, which I've read and that I highly recommend that one. And there's also another one called In the Kitchen. And I really want to get that one too. Uh, so they're not particularly new. I feel like this one was published a little while ago, 2021, it was first published. And I think In the Kitchen was prior to that. So um, anyway, I, I think that'd be really lovely to read and it's very small and I think I'll get through it pretty quickly. So now I'm gonna share with you some things that I've recently gotten. Um, there's, I've got uh, some uh, books that have come from Amazon just recently and I've also got a couple of other things that I've received and I'm, I'm very hesitant to continually share things that I've bought. I don't want, I, I don't like videos that make me feel like I'm just watching people do a show and tell all the time. But these are things that I think are going to be really lovely in the months to come. They're going to add a lot of value to my life and uh, I hope that they'll be interesting to you. Um, so normally I would probably just wait and stockpile these things up and do one, uh, you know, video about all the things that I've recently welcomed. Anyway, I just want you to know it's something I struggle with sharing and I struggle watching, but I just want you to, I, I guess I just want to put that caveat that I am conscious of it and I'm trying to be very deliberate with what I share with you because uh, I don't ever want to make you feel that you have to go and buy anything that I'm sharing. 
these are things that are just really making my life really great. And so anyway, the first thing I wanted to share was um, back when I did my booktube newbie video, I shared that I had a notebook where I kept, you know, like quotes or things like that from books. And I enjoyed doing that because it helped me retain information. So for example, when I read Stanley Tucci's uh, autobiography, Taste, I wrote down a few things in there. There were so many things that I really got out of his book. But one of them was about autumn. And it was, it was this. I like brisk autumns, snowy winters, rainy springs and temperate summers. The change of seasons allows for a change in one's wardrobe and most importantly, one's diet. I really like that. And then there was a couple, I, I wrote down a lot for him. But anyway, I've got this little book which has served me well, but I lost it for about three weeks. I could not find it in our home anywhere. So I knew I needed to get something a little more substantial because I, I like that practice, whether it's writing down a recipe or a phrase or just anything, you know, it's not, not a journal. I do keep a separate journal. But anyway, so I've got this. I was 100% influenced by Miranda Mills a, a couple of years ago, I think now, when, when she first shared Stars Bead book binding. And these books are just really beautiful. They look incredible when I've seen them on screen. They're based in the UK and generally when it comes to things like that, the, the price of the product is not so bad, but then you're paying almost the same amount, if not more, for the shipping to Australia. So I hesitated getting it, but then I saw that they had brought out some new spring commonplace books. And so I thought, okay, I'll have a look and see if maybe there's something there. So I ended up buying this beautiful little book. It's a tiny little book. It's the same size as almost as my other little book I was using, which I do like that it's not a big notebook, so I can keep it in the kitchen, by my bed, whatever. Um, it has commonplace book written down the side, which is cute, but it's all summer flowers on the front and on the back is hydrangeas and hydrangeas are quite special to me. They were a feature at my wedding, so I love having them everywhere. And this cover illustration says it's from uh, the Lady Bird Book of Garden Flowers, first published in 1960. And it's a really nice feel. The book binding is just beautiful. Um, I also got another one, just a small little notebook, which is very similar. It doesn't have any writing down the side, but it's autumn. And I think it's called What to Look for in Autumn, another ladybird nature book from 1960. And on the cover, it has a man walking down the path with his dog with some swans in the foreground. And on the back, it has people harvesting. And this is just delightful. I don't know. I might keep this as like a garden journal, maybe. Um, just to make notes of when I've planted things or maybe I've seen that there are some pests turning up or I did a treatment for this or harvested. Something I really want to get better at doing is logging what I've harvested so I know if I'm getting a return on investment. Anyway, so I got these two beautiful little books and the crazy thing is that these arrived faster than something else I had ordered locally. We've had a major derailment in the middle of Australia at the moment. So a lot of our supermarket shelves are bare. It feels very, very pandemic-like at the moment where a lot of products are not available because they're not here. They're stuck in the null nullable somewhere. This arrived here in a week and it was really reasonable shipping. The customer service was lovely. Um, so if you're in Australia, if you like good stationery, you've been, maybe you've seen these. Um, I recommend them they're beautiful these ones are unlined i prefer books to be uh, to be lined but in the case of um the gut if i use this for gardening it would be good for, to be able to draw uh sketches of what i've planted or where but i feel the pages are thick enough that you could use a fountain pen which i do prefer to use but they're thin enough that i could put a piece of lined paper behind so you've got some uniformity to it otherwise i am writing all over the place but these are just exquisite. They are so beautiful. I'm so glad I got them. Um, and I think I will probably keep them in mind if I need to get journals in the future. Okay, so what I wanted to share with you, I ordered a few books online through Amazon and I definitely want to read one of them now. The other ones are some seasonal reads for later. Uh, so the first one that I got is Nora Ephron's Heartburn. And this has a forward by Stanley Tucci. So this is a Virago Classics, Virago Modern Classics. And I really did love the look of this particular one. 
So Nora Ephron was a screenwriter and she was also a director. She wrote the screenplay for You've Got Mail and I want to say Sleepless in Seattle, but she also directed Julie and Julia, a number of other movies. And I really enjoyed those movies, just that light, heartwarming uh, kind of tales. And this one is has, has a real food focus. Um, so this is this, I'm sure you know the synopsis, so this is not groundbreaking, but seven months into her pregnancy, Rachel, a cookery writer, discovers that her husband is in love with another woman. The fact that this woman has a neck as long as an arm and a nose as long as a thumb is no consolation. Heartburn is a roller coaster of love, betrayal, loss and revenge and how to make the perfect souffle. So I, to have a little bit of a food element to it, I think would be lovely. I really enjoyed that when I read uh, Charlotte Rees' Heartbake last month and I shared that in my what I read in March. And so I think this is going to be my next book. I just finished a book yesterday. So I think this will be my next one. And then the other books that I got, and I didn't expect them all to arrive so quickly. I actually wanted one book and then I realized that I had, if I bought two more, I would have a collection. So I bought them all. And so what I ordered was um, Agatha Christie's Midwinter Murder, which has these beautiful end pages. It's a series of short stories. They are Hercule Poirot, Marple, um, some other random stories in there as well. And then I also got Sinister Spring by Agatha Christie, which is the same, the same premise. Look at these beautiful end pages. Um, so I got these two. The reason I bought these was because I wanted to buy Autumn Chills, which is the other seasonal um, collection of books. And I already have Midsummer Murders. So I have a nice little collection. I'm... I like that. I think it's nice. And these are the sort of books that I just love to have scattered around the place, you know, so when if someone comes over and if they're staying the weekend or whatever, there's something they can pick up. The Autumn Chills one hasn't arrived yet. I'm not sure when that will get here. That's the one I wanted to read, but then I'll be getting into Midwinter Murder. And I'll definitely be keeping that on my bedside table throughout the seasons. So those were some of the things I got. I'm just really, really enjoying these thoughtful things that I'm getting at the moment and look at this this is just so beautiful this little collection of hardback hardback books it's just so delightful it just makes me so happy and I'm clearly in my hardback era when I shared um, a this or that and I was you know do I prefer paperbacks or hardbacks and paperbacks is my preference but clearly Clearly, I'm having a hardback moment right now and I'm not mad about it. It's just so lovely to be surrounded by these beautiful things. I do think that books are not just about what's in them, it's how you feel around them and I, 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 I'm, in, I'm enjoying this moment. So thank you so much for joining me for this bookish chat about all things gardening, seasons, nature. This has been a pleasure and I hope you have enjoyed it as well. And I hope you have a lovely weekend ahead. Bye.